Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the show at Wise Up Rise Up Show with me, your host, the Queen Bee, Danny Wons. How are you feeling? As we chat this morning to the devilishly handsome, the fabulously wonderful, the incredibly knowledgeable Mr. Fidel Bell Hill, the modern man. Good morning. Jody Soul, good morning. Bab Naradi, good morning. Elise Woodside, good morning. The devilishly handsome Ian Dixon, good morning, sir. Shut up for fuck's sake. <laughs> Jesus. The fantastic Lizzie Jackson Barrett, good morning. Good morning. Josephine Sandra, everybody, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. I am mid putting my face and I am just applying some mascara. Good morning. I hope you are all well. Welcome to Wednesday's hump day. Um, and when we say hump day, I think we as a community made a decision quite some time ago that we were not going to subscribe to the fact that Wednesday is the hump of the week. Unless that hump means you're getting some jiggy jiggy. It does not mean that it is the slog of the week getting over the hill to the other edge of the week. It is another good day to be had. Now then, bear with me. I'm still in the process. We are not looking our best yet. Let me just sort this situation out. It was all I could do to get to the new to get to the old house. We're still waiting on internet, everyone. It's still a pain in the backside. We are still uh, in between houses at the moment. Very, very lucky to be able to be in this position. My friend messaged me the other day. She went, Danny, do you realise what you just said? You've got a spare house. Like, just for a few weeks. Just for a couple of weeks while we uh, while we knock down this house. One, we're not actually knocking it down. Uh, but what we are doing is we're getting out of it. But we cannot do that until we have internet in the new house. So we were promised it today. Um, but me and my husband don't believe it's going to be today. We reckon it's going to be more like Friday because you know what it's like when it comes to service providers. It is what it is. They connect you when they're going to connect you. But you lot, I have got some big announcements to make in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, Joe Swan from Chocolate PR is in the house. Good morning. Happy sunny Wednesday to you, my angel. Got a great feeling about today. Well, funnily enough, Joe Swan, me too. Um, I don't think my jaw would move until the internet was in the new house. Well, like I said, it's been a bit of a struggle. Uh, Wallace is definitely um, feeling it uh, at the moment. I mean, both of our worlds, both of our lives are, are on the interwebs. Uh, however... Um, he's a gamer, so he's like got no downtime at all. He's had to resort to old school, like 2012 football manager. The guy is in dire straits, I assure you. It's horrific for him. First world problems up in here. My husband has to game on a 2012 game to get his gaming done. Um, but I hope you're all good. Joe Gilbert joined us from Lanzarote. Hello, our international audience. And uh, we've also got Jojo Smith, one of our incredible speakers from Be Inspired. Good morning, you beautiful B. I want to say I love you too. Um, I hope you are all feeling good. I have got an absolute corker ever guest for you this morning. I have been so, so excited to share this incredible human being with you. Um, and it will not be the last time that you see us doing things together either. So we've got loads to tell you about this morning, but I can't wait to introduce you to um, my incredible, brand new, but awesome friend, uh, Marilyn Okoro, in just a couple of, uh, in a couple of minutes time. Good morning. I'm going to be honest to say I have a headband every envy whenever I see. Do you, should we do it? I'd have to do this every so often for you lot. Do you want to do you want a scarf tutorial? This is laziness at its epitome. This is the epitome of laziness right now. There is no um there is absolutely no reason that I do this other than I'm lazy and I don't have to do my hair. So what I, what I do is this. Are you ready? I'm going to take my earphones off. I'm going to do you a tutorial because it takes literally 5 seconds. So massive big scarf in half like this and then like a winter scarf put two through there like that like that push it back split these two in half and then tuck them in and that's it and i'm sure there are better ways to do head scarves and head wraps but for me this is lazy it makes me feel like when my mum says or she used to say before i told her that this is a thing now i'm just wearing head scarves that i look like mrs mop i don't think i do i think i look beautiful 
Shut up, mum. <laughs> So yes, there you go. That's how I that's how I tie my headscarf. Yeah, no way is that a scarf. It is a scarf. Yeah, fold it in half like a winter scarf, pull it through, pull it back, tuck the two ends in. Fish, bash, bosh. There is nothing uh, complicated about the way I do anything. Um, although my husband would probably, probably disagree. Right, my loves, my angels, my darlings, I have been on a mission for the past, well, for the past few months, but certainly for the past sort of 48 hours and on into the next two weeks, I am on a ticket mission for Be Inspired. Uh, if you haven't had a little inbox from me, uh, if you have not had a cheeky little inbox from me saying, hey, we've got your ticket yet. Don't be offended. It's coming. It's coming your way. Hang on. Jojo Smith's got a little cheeky offer for you right now. Are you ready? Those of you that are listening, ready for Be Inspired. For the first two people, that buy a ticket through Jojo Smith from Creative Sass from her link today can win a chance of being a beta reader of my chapter for There She Glows, exclusive offer. I've just finished the first draft and it's nearly finished me off, but I'm proud of it. I'm in it. Yes, I'm famous. I love it being featured in somebody's book. Um, That's ace. Oh, I made up about that, Jojo. But yeah, for the first two people to get their link, uh, their... um. What's the word? Get their Be Inspired ticket through JoJo's link today. We'll get access to that. Go, Joe, get your link in here. Let us see it. Um, if you haven't got your ticket to Be Inspired already, get one through JoJo's link. She's got something going on for you. Uh, as do many of our speakers. Uh, lots of them have got little juicy, brucey bonus offers if you get through their affiliate link. I'm not bothered where you get your bloody ticket from. Just get your ticket because it is going to be phenomenal. All right, enough. I feel like I'm suitably made up now. I'm slightly angular and aggressive on the eyebrows, but still, we can we can let it go. We can let it go. I could tidy it up at a later date. I'm only in here today just to do the show, just to come and do this bit, and then I'm going to go back to the new house, and I'm on a messaging and ticketing mission to get as many of you guys getting your tickets as humanly possible. Today only, Jojo Smith just popped her link down there. Grab it from there. That's how you can get to read um, be a beta reader of her chapter from there she glows right okay i'm gonna gather myself it's gonna be an excitable show today i have got absolutely no doubt in my mind um i met this lady a couple of weeks ago um via a mutual friend of ours the incredible uh, emma sale from sister app and killing kittens uh, emma is a dear dear friend of mine she's been a huge supporter um of the flying away foundation and in fact everything that it is that i do um since we met about 12 months ago. Um, and then she put on a panel uh, called Back Back Yourself um, for Sister uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I was honoured to be on a panel with this incredible human being. Please welcome to the show at Wise Up, Rise Up show, Olympian and phenomenal human, Marilyn Okoro. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, hear good. You. Hi, you look stunning as always. I'm loving the tutorial. I you am well. Oh, to you. I had a little headgear going on. Tried I to find the yellow. It. <laughs> it, looks, it looks much better on you. See, mine's mine's pure. Yeah, pure. love it. Love I it. I was about 14 years old, Marilyn, where I'd be doing the washing up and I'd shove a scarf on my head to put it because I didn't have a headband to hand. And, and I wore it ever since. So people go, oh man, you know, you wear your headscarves, it looks so glamorous. I'm like, well, it's, it's proper awesome. queening. We're resourceful. <laughs> Listen, we use what we got and we look fabulous. No, you look beautiful I today. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm so excited. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank you so much. I've got Mazza coming. with me. That's oh, the other Mazza. Mazza on the same screen. Yes. I am digging it. I am digging it. <laughs> Um, Marilyn, we came across each other a couple of weeks ago, just a I know. couple of weeks ago. I know. Hey, new friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Um, it's been one of those experiences when you meet people in your life where you go, hey, I like the cut of your jib. And someone else goes, hey, I like the cut of your jib. Let's be friends. And we kind yeah. of... Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just listening, like nodding furiously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was, a, it was deeper than that because a lot of the stuff you said just resonated with my journey. And... I was like, I need to know her. <laughs> We're friends. And now we do. Uh, that's it. It's, yeah. That's it. And you're only living in Wigger, which is like down the road from me. That was the other thing. You know, I'm attuned to the accent now. So I was like, she sounds local. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, that I do. I don't sound like a Wiganer, but I'm working on it. Hey, love. Hey, up. Hey, up, duck. <laughs> so 
so Marilyn, thank you for joining us on the show. It's a, it, I mean, friendship and joking aside, it's an honour to have you here. I am so, um, I'm so happy that you've taken some time out because I know that you're currently um, enjoying some time, <laughs> aren't you? Enjoying some time. I know it's your sister's birthday. Um, yes. So to take the time out on a Wednesday morning um, is, I'm really, really just so grateful. But Marilyn, tell us a little bit more about you for people who haven't met you before. Well, where do I begin? So, yeah, I am in northwest London, which is where I was born and raised for the first 10 years of my life, I would say, because I've got a pretty nomadic lifestyle, as you'll get to hear. Uh, so Stonebridge Park is where I started life, uh, the streets that raised me, I say. And I normally would say Wembley because that's what everyone has heard of. But it's the, the little tucked away part that you just keep going through. Um, but that's home. My mom is still very close to that. Now it is my, my younger sister's birthday. She is a two time stroke survivor, sickle cell warrior. So we always celebrate her in, as much as we can. Like her last stroke was just last year and she's still, you know, coming out of that. So, uh, that said, I'm sort of a big, big sister slash mom to both my younger siblings. So growing up, you know, hardship was what we knew, but it was, um, it was what gave me that resilience that I feel like I've taken into my sporting career, uh, which brings me on to the fact that I am freshly retired from the entanglement that was track and field, <laughs> almost a 20 year, and yeah, six whole Brilliant. weeks, six whole weeks, but about five years in the making to get into that decision and being okay with it and being at peace with it. Um, so many people have said, well done for deciding. And I didn't really actually understand at first why people were congratulating me because you know on the other side of that people were saying oh don't give up don't quit one more year but i've been li listening to that for about five years and you know what i was i'm tired and one more year in a 20 it, year career as well. yeah I, mean, I was like that's not really giving up it's it's quite the opposite <laughs> so yeah i i i mean oh, we're just gonna unpack today but i am in a place where i am finally stepping into me i always say like there was lessons to be learned. My life is more than just the amazing medals I've won, the places I've traveled, but it can't be measured in those medals alone because, you know, that journey has had incredible highs, but devastating lows. And I'm at a place where I am ready to embrace all that it was. I'm proud of who I am, what I stood for. And I found my voice and I'm just literally using it everywhere <laughs> um, because I believe there's so many lessons and pitfalls that I would love to help, not just the up and coming, the next generation, but those that are in the midst of it now. Um, yeah. And the culture really needs revolutionizing. So there's lots of things that I'm doing now. It's almost like that big boulder's moved and I'm just yeah. like, wow, there's a big world out there. World. Yeah, and so I'm, you know, it was wonderful seeing you because you just gave me so much hope and joy because there's there is lots of strings to my bow and people always kind of make you choose and, and go into a box and I want to be a life coach and I want to be a speaker and I want to be an agent and I just want to help whoever I can help and I love mentoring mentors are a huge part of me and you were just there doing it all and doing what I love as well singing so you know what it can be done so it's it's just such a pleasure to connect with you I believe in like divine moments and being on that panel was definitely one because I was meant to connect with you <laughs> yeah and we've got some things that we are going to be doing together and we'll talk about that in just a little bit i want we want, I want to talk more about you uh, everyone's going wild for you by the way uh joe swan in the house such powerful thing to share Jamie, in this way uh, oh, Amanda, i don't like you i love you oh, <laughs> i love, love you too awesome. um so it, when we talk about athletics and the industry of athletics. Mm. Um, it, it, I, because I come from sort of the music industry, um, mm. I often draw kind of parallels between the two. It yeah. is very, very consuming when you're in the career part, mm. of, and in inverted mm. commas, the career part mm. of, um, of being in athletics. It is all consuming, isn't it? If you, you know, we start in athletics, I say we, people in athletics because I don't run to the toilet Marilyn I'm so sorry um <laughs> I don't anymore it's fine I walk everywhere <laughs> happily I've got a car but, for a reason <laughs> start, but ath athletics starts very young um mm. you know sporting in general starts very young yeah and it is the whole space of career in the competitive field yeah. and then once that 
however we we wouldn't like that to be the case there is a shelf life on it just like absolutely i don't want to be singing my shoulda coulda wouldas in working men's clubs when i'm 40 years old it doesn't it's not going to work for me mm -hmm. you know if we look at we've joked about in the past the x factor for example the overs were over 26 that was when you were considered not good enough for the music industry in exactly the same way. sport yeah. mm, exactly so, the same so uh, what's been interesting, and we had a really long and lovely conversation on Friday, uh, mm. where you was talking about, you know, that bit of your career actually as an athlete is only one phase, one season of the long mm. career in the athletics industry. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what other industry do you sort of start at age five, you know, five, six, seven, for me, it was 10. And then you're pretty much a husband by 25, <laughs> according to systems. Um, and I'm someone that I have existed in systems that I wasn't supposed to have been. You know, um, I went to a beautiful boarding school in the outskirts of Hertfordshire and then an even more elitist one in, in Buckinghamshire. Um, purely, but that was my path. That was my destiny. Um, my dad, who I'm estranged from, sent me to boarding school and it was meant to be, I guess, a punishment, but it was my blessing. Um, and found that community that helped me thrive. But, you know, the culture of sport and any performance, I would say, you know, it's validation on how you do in one moment. And, you know, whether your race is 10 seconds or whether it's six jumps in the pit, if you get six jumps or two minutes in my sense, you know, it's all hanging on that. And so you, you, you have to be all in, you have to be focused. But what no one ever tells athletes is, hey, and this is my message to athletes. Now let's start with the end in mind. Let's, figure out, you know, a plan, because we're so focused on having a plan in our, uh, our expertise and our, and our disciplines. But then when it comes to the rest of our life, which is the rest of our lives, because our, our sport does have a shelf life, you know, 10 years is the expectancy, you know, some of us stretch it to 15, 16, but you know, 10 years versus the rest of your life, and you're not planning for that section, but you're not encouraged to. You know, and it's only when you know better, you can do better. And so that's what my mission is now to really revolutionize the way athletes are thinking and coaches. You know, I, I've been privy to actually some of the battles I've had with coaches because they weren't supported. They didn't understand um, pretty much what I call a maverick in athletics because I specialize in the 400 and 800, a combination. And for so long, people were trying to fit me into one of these boxes. And I was like, look, I can do both. Yeah. But when you're, you're young, you know, you, you do have that fearlessness. And I think that's how I came into the sport because no one ever thought I was going to, you know, do anything special in the 800. I was too big. I was too muscly. I'm a sprinter. That's what all the black people do. Um, and so I came on the scene and, you know, we already had Kelly Holmes who had that space. So, ooh, who's this? Um, but I was looking at, you know, your Diane Modals and your Maria Matolas. They were my inspiration. And later on, Serena Will Williams and different sport yeah. because they owned who they were. They had gone through stuff and still ran anyway. Um, and that's kind of me. You know, I've been in lots of situations where I've been scared. I felt I've had to feel that fear. And that's actually what's catapulted me to, to greatness, to be honest. So, it was, it's just about recognizing that we are a brand, which is very new to us. And we actually are the main stakeholders and deserve to be at the top. I think when you come into it, especially how I came into the sport, sort of a, a pretty decent junior, um, a good university level athlete. And then suddenly in two years, I was standing on the Olympic start line with my rivals and who were my idols, if you know what I mean. Um, you're very uh, thankful for everything everyone's doing and everyone makes you feel like it's because of you. There's a lot of ego involved, especially with track and field. It's one of the most traditional sports there is. Um, but it's because, you know, it's dog eat dog, man. Like there is not much money in the sport. So when we talk about professionalism, I found it very hard to call myself a professional athlete because at many stages I was actually earning money from things way out of, you know, the arena of sport. And that's what I was doing 40%, um, 40 hours a week. You know, the majority of my time was what was going to bring in the money. But actually, because I was an Olympic medalist and because I was being on TV, everyone would assume that I'm this elite runner. And so I'm trying to explain to people and, and you know, bust some of these myths that actually the elite part of it is the mindset. And that's what we're seeing with 2020 um, with the pandemic. You know, it was a massive divide between the have and the have, have nots. And I call them the one percent club. And I'm here to chase the 99 because there's still people out there that don't even know if they will ever make that team. But they are training 
round the clock and doing everything and investing into a dream, you know, and I love to tell people dream big because that's what I did. A 10 year old from Stonebridge Park, I dreamt massive. Um, and because I was willing to keep going and never give up until I got what it was I set out to do, you know, it can be done. It's not easy. There's huge humps, there's huge disappointments, but there's so much learning. And the, the more I learned about who I was and what I stood for, um, the more empowered I became. And, and yeah, and here we are. <laughs> here's the interesting thing, and we talk about this in business as well, that having having just one sole focus means you're really sat on a house of cards because mm -hmm. it only takes an injury or it only takes mm -hmm. to kind of fall down for the whole thing to come down. So when, mm -hmm. we, when I talk to businesses, I talk about having, you know, multiple revenue streams or a product suite or you don't get as a performer, as a um, as an elite athlete, you don't get multiple revenue streams unless you're in that one percent that one percent mm -hmm. that has all of the sponsorship deals the mm. one percent that has all of it that gets to do all the sofa surfing around all the chat shows that the one yeah. that you know yeah. when, you, when you when you're when you are the prize horse being trotted out yeah. then that's okay but what about when you're not because that's however we look at it for anybody that's a finite amount of time and like you said helping people in the 99 percent the people who do have jobs to hold down in order for them to compete in the way that they do they're spinning mm -hmm. all the plates it's not like you know a footballer that gets paid multiple millions of pounds yeah. a year to sustain their athleticism yeah you know, the bigger the bigger picture and the picture that isn't really shouted about is that whole big wedge in the middle yeah. of the people who are professional athletes and yes they yeah. do compete and yes of course they get sponsorship and paid and things like that but they have got all these plates to spin as well and i think the more that we shine the light on this the more that we can lift up our pro athletes and protect them absolutely better. absolutely it's about the legacy of the sport and i feel like track and field has been a, been in a really in a crisis to be honest for the last since 2012 to be honest we've got some phenomenal talent coming through we've got some phenomenal you know superstars yes but you know like we say we have some incredible federations who are you know doing their damnedest to support athletes but it, it only trickles so far um and like i love that you use the sofa surfing analogy because you know i'm desperate to get on strictly hello because yeah. out there i'm trying to get myself on strictly okay i only teach myself on youtube i'm not a professional just love to move but anyway, we're universe, and we're we progress. Right Listen, I'm in everyone's DMs. Colin Jackson, hit me up. Um, but um, <laughs> I had an exchange on LinkedIn with, you know, one of um, our legends. And I'm not going to put him on blast because I have a lot of respect for him. And he was very, very humble. So his initial response to an article I put up, which was about a Harlequin player being dismissed um, of service in a four minute Call, uh, meeting and I was like wow you know I got a, a letter through the post you know you're no longer on funding off you go and that's you know the trajectory of a lot of elite athletes once you hit that 25 if you don't have you know that silverware um but for me I just felt like you know what? I have given everything I've pulled out my heart to this sport I have got medals I you know I've done everything it was asked of me and you still just kick me to the curb and and then there's the whole aspect of drugs in sports so I was actually denied you know stuff that was my right um, and then to get that back in retrospect, you know, it's heartbreaking. And I think when I got my Olympic medal 10 years late, um, but nonetheless, it arrived, it just told me I was enough. And I knew then that, you know, whether I, it was to get back to Tokyo, I was going to leave the sport on my terms. And I think what I'm doing now is, is that manifestation of that. And, you know, back to the story, this article went up and I was saying, as long as there's stories like this in 2021, there is work to be done in this space because I, there's this whole thing about this is this is my space. And, you know, I've had quite a few um, interesting reactions to the, the work that global sports management is trying to do, but it's very necessary. I don't think it's going to take one company or one person. It, it needs collaboration over competition. And he was like, oh, you know, you know, as long as we embrace change and, and transition, you know, he'll be all right, Maz, as will you. And I was like, stop right there because you're quite around. now enjoying a very fruitful um you know he doesn't probably get do any gig for less than 10k you know and you know he had a seamless transition but it wasn't necessarily just because of his athletics it was because he was part of that culture where they were on record breakers they were on gladiators so they became household names and then boom you know, and they're still 30, you know, he replied, he said, you know what, my heyday was 30 years ago. So I'm sure things have changed. And I said, that's how you should have started. Not with the complicity that exists at the moment. Well, that's how it's always been done. We had to go through it, blah, blah, blah. 
and I can't take it. That was what, you know, really got on my nerves when I was competing. Like I had some really amazing mentors right there, not telling me anything. Like you're just letting me fall down that stitch. Why? I just think it's unnecessary. Um, but at the same time, you're told to be very selfish and focused and sheltered, but this is about humanity and we're all humans before we are anything else. And unfortunately, right now, athletes are being treated and any performers really as commodities. And, you know, I am a human first and, you know, I just love the human race and we're just called to be kind. So, you know, that's what that for me comes first. And I think when I was, you know, came challenged with mental health issues and stuff, I thought, you know what, I love running, but I love me more. So right. <laughs> gotta put it down, gotta put it down. Yeah, and that's when the thing you love starts to become toxic. When the thing mm. that you love starts to become, if it's the sole focus, and it is in athletics, yeah. forsaking everything else, mm. it's forsaking any kind of social life. Your social life is athletics. Oh my gosh. It's forsaking any kind of going out and eating wrong or, you know, all of this. Sort yeah. Of stuff. Making up for that bit now, I'll tell you, tell you that much. <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> to come and drink champagne in oh my God. island. And I've seen the new crib. <laughs> beautiful by the way congratulations oh, thanks. thanks very much um but yeah i it's so, like you say it's so consuming and getting that education piece right uh all all the way through it it's gonna be a difficult nut to crack i guess uh, like you say in just just one person in one corner of the world it's almost like a call to arms now with, mm -hmm. uh, with the rest and i love that you've got is that a bird and wolf jacket by the way oh my god yeah i just got her <laughs> just i haven't taken it off it's the sister was, one uh, do you know what i was gonna wear mine this morning i've got my fly anyway t-shirt <gasps> i was gonna uh, wear my bird and wolf one and we would have been matchy matchy then that would have been uh, um, we'll save it we'll save it for one more in person <laughs> um, <laughs> But like I say, do, that education piece is, is going to be a tough nut to crack. Mm. So what sorts of things are you doing and you getting involved with to, to start to open up that conversation, to start to, because we got to infiltrate from the inside out is the way that that's we That's right. Do. That's, I love that you in. said that. Yeah. So because I <laughs> infiltrate, these, these are good at that. These are good at that, aren't they? I know. Can you see me? Um, <laughs> I was doing a photo shoot at my old school and it's like beautiful National Trust land at Stone. I was just like, can you see me guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, because I was the only black girl at school. So you could definitely see me. That's why I'm here. Um, but I'm doing so much, but it's an extension of, you know, me, which is what makes it, you know, I'm getting athletes going, oh my God, your transition is so seamless. I'm like, no, <laughs> where were you 18 months ago? Where were you six months ago? I have had to step back from Tokyo because I couldn't keep up. Up until September, just last year, I was training nine, ten sessions a week around my amazing job for the Brick, you know, as health as a health and crisis coordinator. But you know, the, the charity really became, you know, my literally the bricks that helped me rebuild my life and the service, the wraparound service we were giving um, the people we work with. I was like, this is what athletes need. So I think just then, you know, subconsciously, I was just learning and taking on, you know, the importance of multi-agency working and really getting the idea that it's just going to take an army. You know, it's a movement. Um, and when you're changing culture, it's about changing mindsets. So, you know, the first thing I'm doing is using my voice because, you know, I found it. And I think a lot of the time when I did speak up along the journey, when I was still learning, um, earning my wings, I was shut down. I was dismissed. Yeah. And, and what I realized was that was my truth. So no one can really tell me that that wasn't, you know, the reality of it. And I'm, I'm pride myself, you know, one of my values is honesty. And I um, was simply telling my truth. And I knew there was my other one is I can't stand injustice. And I knew this wasn't fair. My rule of life is life is not fair. But you know, whatever things aren't fair, I try and change it until it is. Um, trying to even the balance up for sure. That's it. And, and that's, you know, essentially what um, Global Sports Management Services, which is what I'm a part of um, for the UK, Middle East, Europe and Africa sub section. I've got all of it. I'm greedy. Um, Love it. Have it all it's, there. It's about, you know, um, levelling that playing field. Last year, I joined forces with the um, Women's Sports Trust. I was part of the Unlocked. Um, I'm now the alumni. Oh, my gosh. And a year ago, I met 40 other female badass ambassadors just wanting to make noise for women in sport because, you know, the media were just going, oh, women's sport is dying. Uh, I hate that we have to call it women's sport because, you know, when you look at some of the sports, we are the warriors, we, especially track and field. We are leading and paving the way. Come on, guys, keep up. Right. Um, right. And, you know, that was one of the things I loved was, you know, I can beat the boys. <laughs> um, 
And, you know, I was so, I grew up feeling so just empowered. Nigerian culture is so proud. I was, you know, I wasn't afraid of who I was. Um, I've got this strong warrior mum who drives me insane, but I just love her tenacity and just audacity to do whatever it is she wants. Um, and then when I got into elite sport, it was like trying to shrink me and, you know, made me hide pieces of myself and made me question and doubt. Oh, your muscles are too big to run 800. Oh, you're too heavy. Um, and these voices were pretty powerful voices and that's you know, dangerous. You know, the language we use around people, we have to be very mindful of. And I've done a lot of work with mental health and, you know, suicide prevention and myself, you know, coming through an extremely abusive relationship that I never thought I would be in. The language and just the, um, the environment that you're in. Sorry, that's Bentley just trying to get some attention. Right. Dog, right? scent. Yeah, that's my, my little <laughs> angel. But he loves attention like his mama. So this is what he does when I'm on, on camera. I love it. Um, but yeah, so I just thought, you know what, it is going to take, you know, gathering with like minded people. And I love team. I grew up very lonely as a child. I've had you know, stints in care and I love being around people. My first sport was lacrosse because it was a team sport and I loved netball, tennis. Uh, but running was the thing that saved me. Running was what was accessible to me. Running was, you know, the sport they gave me that first role model, which was my first coach, George, who noticed that I had talent, but also I needed that support and that nurturing and that mentor. So that's been something that I seek to be that mentor that, I, I, you know, obviously George couldn't come to uni with me and everything else. And eventually with elite sport, you get prized away from that first almost nanny state kind of setup, which is beautiful. And it, it almost lulled me into a false sense of expectation because I just thought everyone was this nice. Everyone was uh, like really lovely. They're not. And <laughs> yeah, they're not. this is interesting <laughs> to ask you about actually. Uh, I was really blessed and got to, um, uh, I went to the, it was the Grand National, it was Ladies Day uh, a couple of Ooh. years ago. I, I want I want tickets. It wasn't like I didn't. I won't be a flash. Um, I, I want tickets. Went to Ladies Day, and I'm treated a couple of members of my community and my friends like with like these. I've won four tickets. I was like, right, who really deserves like a, some time out? And okay. we went to this Ladies Day, and we went into um, the sports tent. Mm -hmm. And in the sports tents, there was a, there was um, different talks, different sports people that were on there, particularly women in sport, um, and. The, they were talking about the coaching culture and the actual the abuse culture that occurs mm. in professional athlete, mm. um, athletics. Um, the way that some, uh, but as as a broader business, the way that coaches uh, um, deal with athletes sometimes isn't isn't the nicest. Shall we? No, I mean, if you're talking about toxic relationships, <laughs> let me tell you something. No, well, <laughs> that's for the book. That will come out in the book. For sure, for sure. But, you know, my whole career, I've been coached by males. You know, I'm in a very male saturated space. Yeah. And, you know, what has, happens with that is there's not a lot of understanding. So tonight I'm actually on a live with the Well HQ and we are revolutionizing you know, looking at sport and training from the female lens, which I'm retired. I, I you know, that, but that's, that's sailed a long time ago, but wow. When I did the athlete course, I was like, why was the first conversation I had about my period at 34, two years ago? Um, why have I never used what is my superpower of being a healthy female to maximize my training in the gym? Instead I was getting told, let's not go in the gym. You're too muscly. Let's just kill you with the miles, let's get some of that weight down. Um, why are you so heavy? Um, oh, this is what I did, you know. One of my coaches was six foot four, big old American dude. You know, we don't run the same as males and that's for a reason. Right. And, you know, it's not like with the 800 especially, it's, it's all depending on your genetics and your tactics. And I was someone that liked to hit the front quite hard. So that's what resonated with that coach. Um, and I thought he was gonna really like, champion my style because in the UK that was not the way to run um that's not how Kelly Holmes ran it so why are you running it like that I was like because I'm not Kelly Holmes I'm just I'm me, not Kelly for God's I'm just me. um so yeah but you know what a lot of education is being done in the coaching space yeah and we're trying to raise up our women coaches because we just don't have enough 
and just to have that empathy and that almost that willingness to be told and learn and we're seeing some incredible female coaches shout out to coach christine she's doing amazing work with lavia and you know we're really seeing them blossom and that dynamic um of having you know also marina she's amazing um and, you know, I just think, oh, God, how different would my journey have been if I'd had even just a female mentor yeah. to work? Because I, I had some great coaches. I liked their audacity. That was something that, you know, I'm like that. I'm just like, you know what? Tell me something I can't do and I'll show you. Yeah, like ways I can. Up. Yeah, oh, yeah, but also it was a bit, a bit dangerous at times. It was a little bit dangerous and it cost me my body. It cost me um, at times my mind. And, you know, I think back to championships that I'm seeing because obviously it's like a reflective time. And so I'm looking through Google thinking, oh, girl, you look good. But yeah. what I was thinking at the time was far from that. Um, and I have some, you know, I'm working through a bit of regression therapy at the moment because I have some real blanks that I just don't remember because that was my way of dealing with the trauma. And I would just chuck it into running. But now running's not there. So, you know, we've got to, we got to face these things. In this now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So but, from um, competitive athletics to dragon slaying is the and it, it is the is the thing you know we we all have to do it at some point you know yeah. not all of us are, are blessed enough to have the channels to 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 push through if you know if we've experienced trauma or if we've experienced those things m the movement of your body is an incredible way to do it. we talk about this often when we get you know fitness professionals onto the show um yeah. you know allowing the movement of body not the pushing of your body too hard oh so my that gosh. it breaks the yeah. she's had but yeah actually the connection with yourself yeah. is, is a huge so i love that you so i'm all about movement now because I actually haven't ran since the 31st of December. Um, not necessarily. I don't know why. I, honestly, I can't. There's something there when I think about running. I'm exhausted. But you know what? That's 20 years of just push, 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 push. Break down. Get back on it. Break down. Get back on it. So I have a really unhealthy relationship with pain because I spent the last three years in chronic pain. Um, and it's only now that I'm just like, oh, I can touch my toes and, you know. And things are going to snap off. I've booked a physio appointment with my physio on Friday just for me. Like, let's get those cuts and let's feel good. And one of the ways that I did keep getting, because I love to talk about setbacks and supporting people through transition, but also coming back, bouncing back, because that's what I feel like. Pretty, pretty good at that. I should have been a hurdler, but hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but one of the ways I did each time I had a bit of a hump or a crisis and trying to get back into fitness was not necessarily by running. I love to dance. I'm not trained in any way. I just love to move, you know, and, you know, right. you know, when we've got a little, you know, libations, you know, I'm a really good dancer. Um, so I love to do sort of dance fit as part of my warm up. I've got some boot camps popping off. Um, just trying to, you know, I've got an amazing uh, partner in crime who has a gym in a horse box. So there's no excuses, people. We will we will pop up anywhere you want. Like and we're just coming. This is the Kenya box, right? This is Kenya. Yeah. So Cali Train is the movement and it's based on, you know, you, your core calisthenics. And we start, we break it down. You know, it's not when I expect I can't flag well, like Oscar gets and does all his things. I'm going to keep it real for you where I'm at. And, you know, it's about movement. And so my program that I'm developing now, which is called Jump Start, to jump start you into whatever motivation you need, whatever lifestyle you wish to lead. Um, but we're just going to just move and we're going to start now because, you know, everyone always asks, how did you do this? The secret is just starting now. Move. And in those <laughs> difficult times, it was literally sometimes the movement was from my bed to the shower. And, you know, yeah. it was just those first steps. You know, everything starts with those first steps. And once you're on that role, you start to find your strength, find your motivation. And I just think, you know, creativity and movement is just so important and it can be so basic. I dance around my living room all the time. So, you know, and that just lifts my mood. And then suddenly I'm all productive. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So moving yourself, having music around you, you know, BPM, beats per minute has a massive impact. On yeah, you know, yeah. Things when you tie them all together. So, yeah. well, I mean, if we look at it very I mean, broadly, Marilyn McGobb's author, because if I look at all of the things that you've got, all the irons that you've got in the fire, all this incredible, um, yeah. this all this kind of next level stuff for you. Yeah. Is, a massively inspiring. I only know a little bit of your story so far. Um, like all of this is massively inspiring. But then when you think about if if we go back to the people that are in athletics right now and they're in the throes of it and those mm. young people they're coming through and they're gonna be in Tokyo and they're gonna do all of these things, mm. how phenomenal to be part of 
being at the at, at the actual finish line of their careers, and they've got people like Marilyn Okora waving, saying, "Hey, do you know it's okay here? It's okay here. When you're ready to stop, you can stop. Mm. There's still life. There is still business Beautiful. to be done. There is still revenue to be generated. Absolutely. There is still inspiration to be given. It's yeah. not over when the race is over. It's not over when the career is over. The career is only just beginning. In fact, yeah. you can't do any of that big legacy creation stuff without having that bit first. That's only yeah. a little bit of it." It's only a little bit. So, you know, I'm pretty much realizing that athletics was my apprenticeship for what I'm going to do now. Right. Um, and it has really prepared me for a lot of the arenas that I'm in, whether it's business. Like as an athlete, you just feel like, oh, my God, corporates, that's so scary. But then when I start speaking to someone, I'm like, look, you're the, like, I've got bags of confidence for you. Um, and it's, so it's about the language. And I like to just prepare myself. So I did my corporate governance course. And I thought, wow, this is really like Japanese, but now I speak, you know, it's great. It's just equipping yourself with the tools that you need to do and follow through with what you're passionate about. Um, there were certain roles that people were offering me and I was just like, so, <laughs> <laughs> just no. <laughs> but it's knowing, it's knowing that and not just chasing the money, you know, but also yeah. the money was awful. So I was just thinking, you know what, I have literally been such a steward and, you know, just you know, the best charity person for the last seven years. My well is well and truly dry, and I right. deserve wealth. And and I've got a very through my life coaching, we get some coaching as well. And you know, one of my biggest hangups in limiting beliefs is that I deserve to have nice things and live live well. I literally just will make anything out of you know nothing <laughs> because. Yeah that's how I grew up it was about survival whereas now I'm just like oh I've paid all my bills at the end of the month and I can afford a t-shirt and I deserve it <laughs> so I'm gonna move into Danny levels and you know buy a whole house especially if I stay up north especially if I stay up north um but yeah I just want athletes to know that they can just be an extension of what they're yeah. doing and just our network is is amazing like anywhere I go they're like do you know this person or do you and I was like if I don't know them I know someone who knows them and I just love connecting people and empowering people so that's pretty much you know I want to be there waving that flag like I was told retirement was a death so you know I was waiting to die like it's yeah. gonna be so bad I literally was but it's such an like I think because it was on my terms so that's what we want to prepare people like to do it on your terms so whether you do work alongside and you, you know that pathway to employment is massive you know go and get some experience because what we don't have is that literal experience in those fields we have so many transferable skills but then ultimately when people look at our CV they're like oh that's nice but you got no experience um yeah. I applied for so many jobs just just six months ago and didn't hear anything back because I guess they couldn't really see how I would fit into their company. And then there's companies that are doing amazing work at, you know, supporting athletes and connecting them with these corporates, but it's not enough to just put them in a room with all these corporates. Um, it's daunting. And also, you know, the companies aren't really ready. Like they love the idea of having an athlete. Many of them are aspiring, you know, runners and marathon runners and that they're fans. But do they actually understand the space? So what Global Sports Management Services is, it's one brand with three strands. The first is getting those stories out there, talking to the athletes, the Global Sports Channel, and sort of demystifying some of those very, very big myths. You know, all the time people are saying, but this and that. You know, we just had a girl run the world record, for the 5K on the roads, Beth Potter, and people are saying, you know, it's not going to get ratified because there were no drugs testers. And it's like, well, no one was expecting her to run a whole world record. <laughs> and people are like, oh, what are, you know, this is an outrage. I'm like, this is what happens. This is our sport. Beth's not faced. She's getting ready to do it again because she's done it once it before. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that's what the channel does. It's, you know, athlete welfare. You know, we've just had this zero tolerance to abuse um, from coaches, this new policy, which I can't believe is just in 2021 being changed that they're now. banned. We're like, what? But that is the culture we were in. And everyone was so complicit. And, you know, there is a real education needed for the athletes, for coaches and for parents. You know, anyone who is going to be um, safeguarding a young a young child who's just following their dream because they are vulnerable. Even for me, my worst case was at 28 years old. So, you know, it's even harder to speak of because people are like, you're growing, you should have known better. But I was in such a vulnerable place that I just was willing to do whatever it took. And someone, an opportunity. as well. Like, it was yeah. 
institutionalized when you're in there and it's that yeah. way it is. you've got to respect what coach says yeah. you have to follow it you know they oh, yeah. know you best and all yeah things. you get constantly told i know you better than you know yourself which is an absolute lie like it's I'll especially <laughs> yes um and nobody knows you more than you know yourself and especially when it comes to what you actually really want and i think why i'm just so just bouncing off the walls because i'm actually doing what i want for me for the first time in so ever so kind of yeah. life first time ever and just unapologetically just taking permission to do whatever the hell i want and if it's wrong you know what <laughs> we'll do something else and it's yeah. you know but when you are under so much pressure it's just like oh my god this person and this person's gonna you know and i had literal times where i ran amazing times but i might have come oh my god bird and my coach wouldn't speak to me for a week what kind of bs is that like if that was a friend i'll be like see you bye oh. <laughs> But yeah, but you know, when you know federations are dangling the carrot of funding, you, you know, you're just like a puppet. So Global Sports Channel is demystifying these myths that is out there because the fans deserve to know. They only get what the media feeds them. Yeah. And the second strand is the Love Athletes platform, which will be like a corporate body of crowdfunding because on your own, you know what, you're gonna, you know, your parents and your friends are gonna be amazing. You're gonna raise like 500 pounds, but we need 30K, you know? And it's like, we need, one, it's a way for the sports fans to engage. I'm always getting asked, how can we support athletes? You know, it's not about, you know, you coming up with 10K or 5K. Hey, you might wanna sponsor 20 pound a month to your, you know, your desired sport and, you know, spread it that way. Let's, let's make it kind of a corporate thing. And then also getting the brands involved getting the investors involved and you know here we have this big body of sponsorship for these athletes which will unlock a starship of support which will for me start with mental health support it will start with brand awareness it will be the the day-to-day -day living costs that they need and also you know if they want to go away and train for six months like I would have loved to have done in the pandemic but couldn't get to Dubai um you know and this pathway to employment you know we're gonna set up these schemes where you can go and work for DHL for a day and then come back to training and they will support you. And then, hey, when you retire, you can go and work for them full time or you've got experience to apply wherever the hell you want. Um, universal entrepreneurialism as well like understanding yeah. how to create a business so, you know yeah. like I, would, I would consider myself wholly unemployable now and i've had some great jobs that like but just unemployable i could go into places and i well i don't i, I just didn't bother anymore i stopped because because i realized that actually i was going to have to employ myself i was going to have to work out what my purpose yeah. was and what my legacy was yeah. going to create my business around that so oh. maybe even assisting to get though to get the business absolutely yeah yeah so absolutely you know i want to connect these athletes with people like yourself and have bring on life coaches as well because everyone assumes your coach is doing all of this stuff and they don't even know what they're doing sometimes all they know <laughs> is they want to teach you how to run really fast or throw really far they're not doing all the mindset work i think they are but they're not and sometimes they're doing more damage um they're not doing the self-awareness they're not doing the entrepreneurship they're not doing the brand work you know if you're lucky you've got an agent that won't pimp you for everything you've got um because let's let's be real track and field is not it's not tennis it's not golf it's not football um so you have to be resourceful and I think that's something that I've always had in my armory but didn't really know how to utilize and I'm still learning now I feel like now I'm like everything becomes a brand oh my gosh what can we do with that <laughs> um but it's exciting because it's just new but I you know if I had known along the journey that I could have done this course and become a life coach. That was a stream of income. I love that you said that because right. my cousin, she's an amazing brand strategist, bless her. And she used to tell me, get your YouTube going, do this. And I was like, oh, when I finish track, oh, I need to run. And she's like, okay. And she's amazing. She's like, just supported me. And like, boom, as soon as I retired, she's like, come on, let's do this campaign That's with Cancer well. Beauty. Um, but I was just like, wow, imagine, you know, how empowered I would have felt there's times where I didn't need to be running. It was actually almost like self-harm. You're just pushing, pushing, pushing. Right. I didn't know what else to do. You know, I just had I had nothing else to do. And I think that's what a lot of athletes are scared of. Like, what else is there that's going to fulfill me? Now? It's, it's, it's filled yeah. up that much space and that much bandwidth mm. in that sole focus for that, mm. you know, long time. People, this happens to people in employment as well. Like, mm. the, the, one of the reasons why we remain comfortable in employment, people will start working for somewhere and work there. Not that that's an issue. We need people in employment. We need people, you know, in jobs and being employed and doing this. Absolutely. But for those people that have that fire within them, that look outside of the window and they go, I know things could be different, but I'm scared. There's that whole bandwidth situation mm. where 
you can't give yourself an opportunity to think about these things mm-hmm. because a it's uncomfortable b what would you do mm-hmm. anyway you've got to keep focused on this you've got to get yeah. to the end of the month yeah. you've got to get the bills paid yeah so then you start to free up that bandwidth and open the doors to possibility mm-hmm. all of a sudden the world gets really big and really small i know <laughs> <laughs> i was like why was i holding so tight to some crumbs but it was my security it was my comfort yeah in a weird toxic kind of dysfunctional way but that's what I knew and so when I got brave when I got strong when I asked for help Mm -hmm. and actually just allowed people to help me I've been someone that's just been s on my chest for so long got great friends but you don't want to burden them and also when you're just seen you're that strong friend so you're just oh my god how can I go tell them this like I know they're dealing with this um you know the eldest in a Nigerian home I've just always been that nurturer you know even my mom I think I'm her mother you really (laughs) I'm sure we're gonna meet her in in one of these regression therapies and be like oh that makes sense so I've always just had that carrying everyone else and so once I just couldn't, and so this is why I really want to work in the space of burnout because it's so, so real. And I know it's something that is happening in, in all spaces, you know, all industries, it, it can happen. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really recognize it in myself because you are just told to keep pushing, don't be weak, don't give up. Yeah. Um, but it was really, really doing some internal damage and how it manifested was actually through injuries, through chronic stress, through chronic pain, sleeplessness. But I thought this is all part of the hustle. And so yeah, there's certain words that I'm just right. like, let's not be stupid. Um, stay hungry. I was literally hungry. I don't want to stay hungry. I want to eat. <laughs> you know, athletes are like, listen, I know I need to talk to AJ for lots of reasons, but that whole stay hungry thing, nah, because you're eating box me. But us track and field chitlins, like, no, we're literally hungry. Um, <laughs> and not hungry. knowing how, yeah, not knowing how to ask, you know, for a decent fee. Like, I'm a bit mouthy on Twitter because sometimes people just annoy me. And, you know, people are always like, oh, you know, um, how can we help athletes? And then it's like, yeah, you're, you know, you, you want to help an athlete. Okay, great. You've got a platform. Absolutely. We're not expecting massive, but don't let me do your whole show for you. Like, You've been amazing. You sent me the, you know, the graphics. You're like, here. I'm like, yes, I'm with Danny. And, you know, I've got people I'm literally writing a whole report before I go on. You know, it's just like, I don't have that time because that's yeah. all I have. My, yeah. uh, my intellectual property and my time. So actually show that you value me. Do your own little research. Shout me out. And, you know, I will bring the goods. Um, but, you know, athletes are just so, we just, we just don't know. And I really, just, knowledge is power. And I'm trying to empower as many athletes as I can. Uh, in all sports. All over the world. So excited about what this whole phase is going to be like. Like you say, you're literally shiny out of like out of the decision for retirement. You've like hung up the running shoes for now, and you're like, okay, here we are. You're adding these strings, not adding these strings. You're developing these strings on your bow. Yeah. Starting to have these conversations, putting yourself out there in these sorts of ways. I'm like, I'm here as your new friend, thinking, ah, ah, oh my god, because I can see it all. I can see the whole thing and how that's going to go and how it's going to pan out. Yeah. How excited for you right now and so excited to be able to have this conversation with this more like with you this morning to be able to be connected with you going forward uh we've talked about doing some work together as part of the fly anyway foundation and you come absolutely on, um, and you coming on to uh be on on the board and join the conversations about Ooh, what we're going to do with our business builders um and also are we are we allowed to say this have we made a decision about this are you going to come and speak and be inspired yeah <laughs> listen honestly like do you know what I just you've been such a light and I'm someone that you know I, I have like, I didn't grow up with any affirmation so you know when I saw what you were doing it just made me feel like okay I can and once I feel that that I don't know what it is that that fire I have to follow it so absolutely like this is the whole point of you know coming from track and field you feel fear I'm scared as hell but <laughs> <laughs> I want to be part of the light. <laughs> I love it. It's I love so, it. so beautiful. <laughs> so that is an exclusive here now, right now, this morning. We have Marilyn Okoro, Olympian and pro athlete, incredible human, uh, ripping things up in the in the athletics industry. Uh, I am proud to be your friend and also proud to be able to share the stage with you uh, on Be Inspired. Um, <sighs> Jojo saying day two, day two, day two. We'll make a formal announcement probably Ooh. later on today. Well, my um, name, favorite number is four. Everyone's fighting, over you know. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's fighting As long over as you. it's the day Danny sings, I'm there. <laughs> That's the deal. Uh, amazing. Your voice, well, girl, is beautiful. Uh, 
thank you so much. Um, as is yours for all of the reasons that you know you shared today. Thank you. Your voice is so so important. I am so 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 happy uh, to be connected with you, Marilyn. How do we find out more about you? How do we follow you? How do we get involved? Tell us how to connect. Well, I'm going to be professional. I'm on LinkedIn as Marilyn Okoro, oh, <laughs> but also. I live on Instagram. So the right. girl underscore Okoro is me, but also I've just launched my uh, coaching um, page as well, which is the Champion You Coach, because that is my brand, Champion You. I'm here to champion you. Um, and also on Twitter, Marilyn Okoro or Emma Okoro4. But generally, if you just plug my name in there, I'll be on there. Don't Google me because you don't mind not like what you see. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're on images and then we're fine. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Absolute I can't pleasure. wait to see you in Absolute just a pleasure. short weeks. Um, I'm so I'm excited. I know. You're going to be sick um, of me, girl. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Huge love to you, Marilyn Okoro, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> What an absolute superstar. What an incredible show. My cheeks are all hot. I'm that excited uh, about the whole situation. Marilyn, don't go anywhere. I'll come and see you in the green room in a second. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you to Marilyn for joining us. What an absolute joy um, to have an Olympian on the show and also such an, a phenomenal human being. Her story is incredible. You will get to hear more of it at Be Inspired. Get your ticket, my darlings. We have got, that's just one of our incredible guests, as well as all of the phenomenal phenomenal speakers that we have so we've got jojo smith who's watching along this morning she's going to be speaking on the stage we're going to do another speaker reveal um in my emails today if you're on my email list you lot we'll be doing another speaker reveal over on the uh, over on the in the emails a little bit later on today and also on the socials keep your papers peeled as we share with you more incredible speakers for be inspired you can get your tickets get yourself over to instagram right go to the queen bee danny Give me a follow if you don't already, because that's just a bit silly if you don't. Go sort that sausage. And then I want you to go to the link in the bio, click, and then grab your ticket. Lifetime access. Does if So if, if you say to me, hey, Danny, I can't. I've got stuff on that day or I'm working that day. It's okay. You're going to have lifetime access to the recording plus all of the bonuses from our speakers as well. So not only are you getting two days full access to 22 speakers, amazing, phenomenal training, inspiration, motivation, celebration. You're also getting all of those fantastic bonuses as well. Um, Jojo, this is just a, a fabulous show this morning. Agreed. Uh, Stephen Bartley is a great positive impl influence who talks about knowing when to quit is a big asset. In fact, he says his main quality to success. Uh, Happy Sexy Millionaire. It's a great book. Um, and we know as well, uh, Marilyn has got a book coming out in December, so I believe. Uh, so keep your peepers peed for that. We will uh, either have her back on the show or we will do a big up for her when that book comes out. Make sure we all grab ourselves a copy uh, when she launches. Uh, thank you for joining me this morning. Morning, you lot go get you be inspired tickets. I will see you tomorrow for more showing up, rising up, and rising up. If I'm in your inbox today, don't get offended. It's because I love you. Get yourself a be inspired ticket. I'll see you later. Trust.